the entirety of human history is full of crap. But crap is actually a very important and crucial part of society because humanity's toilet habits are at the very foundation of modern civilization. In this 100th special installment of The Poopy Show, we find out why. Everybody poops. Well, everybody except birds of prey, women, blood-feeding insects, and North Korea's dictator Kim Jong-un has stated in his biography. And it's well known that most animals don't give a crap about poop. Poop anywhere, anytime, maybe bury it to hide your scent from predators. And that used to be the case for our nomadic ancestors. Early human tribes would constantly be moving from place to place, so not only did they not have to worry about waste piling up, but if anything, that waste actually helped fertilize the land along their way, especially the rest stops where they stayed at for longer. There were places where there was a lot of food already, but each time the humans came back, there appeared to be even more plants and they were tastier too, thanks to the power of manure, not sponsored. So of course at some point it became easier for tribes to just stay there, build permanent structures, learn to farm the poop plants and domesticate whatever that is. And that's basically the foundation of society, and in a way, so was poop. Yes, poop was certainly at the foundation of civilization, and controlling it throughout the centuries is what drove civilization. Now, it wasn't hard to manage waste in small villages. There were often pits outside the living areas, and even back then, humans had the initial idea, or maybe even urge, to poop in moving waters. The real struggle began in the Bronze Age, when some villages upgraded to cities, and there was suddenly a shitload of poop. Based on its population, the city of Nos has produced around 50 tons per day. And how do you move so much poop away from the streets? Well, the Minoan civilization had this brilliant idea. Why not simply turn the whole city into a toilet? The palace in Nos has collected rainwater on its roof, which was used to flush the waste into the ceramic pipes that were on the ground and led to the nearby river. And let me tell you, it didn't get much better than that for a while. If anything, it got worse. It got shittier. You know I have endless admiration and respect for the Mormon public toilets, they just make sense. Humans need human contact and entertainment while pooping. Like imagine you need to go, but you know it's gonna be a long one, so you probably have a germa compilation video ready. But then you open the bathroom door, and oh my god, you see your best mate already is already in there like... Hey bro, I'm pooping. Are you gonna poop too? Hell yeah bro, let's poop together while exchanging political views and discussing current events. And that would have been perfect, we could have stopped there and just enjoyed this. Had it not been for the three plagues of the Roman toilets. Firstly, in Pompeii, the toilets would often catch fire from the hydrogen sulfide and methane explosions. Then there was also the rats, that lived inside the toilets and often bit people's bums. And lastly, the communal shit stick. Either wool, cloth or moss stuck on a, well, stick, which was kept in a shared pot of water where everyone's poop could also exchange political views and discuss current news. Fun fact, the phrase grabbing the wrong end of the stick likely refers to this. I should also mention the toilets were still missing one crucial element. See, nothing could technically stop things from coming up from the seats. As it happens, there's actually a tale of a wealthy merchant from Petoli who had an octopus allegedly sneak into his house through the toilet and steal his pickled fish. All that being said, in medieval England, the waste problem was somehow significantly worse. The most advanced solution for waste back then was essentially any hole you can put your bum on. An example for this is the potty, the term derived from the word pottery. Oh yes, this glorified shit jug is a toilet, used by many well into the 20th century. And people would simply dump those onto the streets. Apart from the poop pot, the poot. There was also this godless contraption, a protruding room with an opening for waste suspended over a moat. This is called a garderobe because at some point people started storing their robes and other articles of clothing there. Why? Well, the smell was so foul it actually kept fleas and vermin away. Fun historical fact. It fucking didn't. Honestly, with this kind of logic and these kinds of disposal systems, I really wonder why people didn't just smear their shit directly on themselves and their clothes. But the garderobe was soon replaced by the commode, which looked like this, but you could get fancy with it. Elizabeth first had lace and velvet around her seat, as well as herbs and flowers all around to conceal the smell. And Sir John Harrington was like, oh no, not my godmother. So he invented a more dignified toilet for her. The first water closet with a raised water system. But people were too busy smearing themselves in shit to implement this new flush system in their homes until 200 years later when Alexander Cummings finally invented that long missing toilet piece, the S-shaped pipe. 
flushing toilets and no more weird shit and actual shit coming up from them. Great. Finally, some progress. It's actually historically proven that society cannot progress if poop isn't managed in God-honoring ways. And I don't think it's a coincidence that historians have characterized the mid-Victorian times as Britain's golden years. Of course they're doing great, they're not absolutely covered in shit anymore. But progress means more people, more people means more poop. Currently, there's one toilet for every 5 to 10 people. In the early 19th century, it was one toilet for every 100 people. Nature was calling, but there weren't enough toilets to answer. And this caused an overflow of sewage to spill onto the streets and the river. Oh yeah, the drinking water at that time was essentially a brown liquid suspension of horse manure in which dead animals fermented along with half the toxic parts of the periodic table. Mid-19th century, the government was like, okay, nope. This needs to stop. It is now law for every house to have a waste closet. Do your business and then it's the job of the night so man, dips on the bad name, to collect the shit and dispose of it. That was a step in a direction. But it did not solve the problem of too many people and too many poop, which eventually caused the great stink. Which was, guess what? The shit just kept piling on each other. There was just shit all over the place. Once again. More than 2,000 years after the Roman Empire, the British just gave up and said, okay, we need a sewer. And they built one by 1865. Which brings us to Thomas Crapper, the holy saint of the modern Crapper. Which is about where we are now. I guess the most significant advancements have been vacuum toilets, robot toilets, and drinking so much monster energy you become constipated to the point of evolving past the need for toilets. This is it, boys. The 100th episode special. Can you believe I've never done a poop episode before? You're welcome for this.